Tom on day two of the 2011 U.S. Sport Aviation Expo. First of all, we're always real pleased when the sun finally makes an appearance after uh, the morning's rains. But uh, there just seems to be a tremendous amount of activity and interest in a few of the survivors at this point of, of the LSA wars. And obviously, you're one of them. It's been a good show so far. We had a lot of interested people come through our booth. We've been doing a lot of uh, demo flights. And uh, we've been doing a lot of press flights with the new certified AMFIB version of the CTLS. Before we get into what's new overall uh, within the flight design spectrum, let's talk a little bit about the state of the industry. There's been a lot of talk that over a period of time there's been an awful lot of offerings in the LSA segment, but only few that really look to be survivors, and it appears that that's finally starting to filter out a little bit. As, as one of the obvious survivors in all this, where do you see LSA going from here? Well, I do think there'll be consolidation in the marketplace eventually. I do have to say I'm kind of sorry about it because I know how difficult it is for people that enter the business and put so much of their life into it to have it not work out on a personal level. I really understand because it's a tough business. I do think that there will be market consolidation. I think Cessna's getting a lot of the sky catchers out, which is good for aviation in general and good for the LSA market in particular because they'll be minting new pilots with it. We've continued to prosper and stay in the market, mostly through the help of uh, flight design in Germany. And we've been able to support the airplanes that we've sold, which is something I'm, I care a lot about. Well, let me ask you this. Why are you a survivor? I think the service mentality of flight design, they, they gave us a giant consignment stock of parts, which has helped us survive and support the people in the field. And also the structure of our distributor network. Uh, we didn't have every airplane that came into the U.S. come into Woodstock, Connecticut. We broke it up into regions and had distributors that were qualified under our quality control plan to take airplanes out of the container and make them ready for flight and register themselves. And that was the start of a service network where someone on the West Coast could feel good about buying an airplane from a company in Connecticut. And uh, I think that was a big part. The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology. There's tremendous questions right now about whether or not the current definition of LSA is going to be enough to allow this industry to prosper and grow once this consolidation really filters out. Are you happy with the definition right now, or, or are there things that would really have improved a lot of the LSA community if the, uh, LS, if the LSA definitions were a little bit more liberal in one form or another? It probably wouldn't have hurt if there was more allowable weight, um, but that's something that we've dealt with probably all of our careers in, in aviation. Every category is weight limited, and it defines it. We're pretty happy with it. We've been able to work successfully within those parameters. One thing that flight design has done in particular is push the avionics for our, our brand. And uh, fortunately, all the new avionics are lighter, not more heavy than the old stuff. And we see further benefit from that. One thing we would like to see is a IFR light definition that would allow aircraft like what you see around us to be able to fly through a uh, cloud layer, not do an instrument take off and fly through a snowstorm to Cincinnati, but to be able to launch and go to where the sun is good in the LA basin or descend through a layer so that you can make that mostly VFR flight. And then it would also allow more uh, flight training for instrument ratings in non-threatening IMC conditions. Well, what's new right now for flight design? What's, uh, what's the latest and greatest? Well, I mentioned before the, uh, the float plane. We just finally uh, got that certified, which was a big job, bigger than we anticipated. 
There's something like 175 data points in the flight test alone and the drop testing and structural analysis and the writing the manuals and the maintenance manual. Every aircraft project is a real big onion and just gets bigger and there's more layers the more you dig into it and uh, this one proved to be that way but we think it's a good product with the Claymar floats on the CTLS. I flew it first time myself last night and oh, wow. report it's great. Another thing that uh, we have now full functionality on the Dynon Skyview system that we are selling in the CTLS and that's proving to be a very popular option as well. Well, why is that? What is that bringing to the mix that we haven't seen before? Well, it's a very capable system. It has uh, synthetic vision and uh, a very uh, detailed database of obstructions. And Dynon's really pushing the envelope on non-certified, non-TSO, although quite appropriate for this use, avionics packages. And they're really affordable and have great technology in them. Their most recent change is they're selling a, a Modes transponder that's operated from the screen like a Garmin 1000 mm -hmm. and the integrated autopilot system will be offering that soon. We think the future is bright for uh, new panels for light sport aircraft. Now, another moment of freedom from Cirrus Aircraft. Freedom through safety. Perhaps the ultimate freedom is confidence, assurance, and peace of mind. We design it into every personal aircraft we build. It's the security that comes with knowing you're flying the plane with a parachute. The breakthrough concept that launched the Cirrus phenomenon. Now, of course, the big news is your nice little two-seaters may be joined by something that's twice the fun. Well, Flight Design has just announced they've been working on it for several years doing the background R&D and planning. It's a pretty clever design using the CTLS, it's a four-seater, as you mentioned, using the basic CTLS as the start. It would be using a Lycoming engine, mm -hmm. and four 190-pound pilots is the design, not a two plus two, mm -hmm. with two doors on the left and, and one on the right, with a, like a Pullman door, using a similar landing gear to what you see on this, very similar configuration. It's worked out mathematically that it'll be a very successful configuration. Now, do we have uh, an idea at this point that you're willing to publicize in regards to price point, availability, and production plans? Uh, the price point they're looking at is near $200,000 in today's dollars, which would be a really good value, we think. Mock-up at Aero and Oshkosh in 2011, flying prototypes soon after that in public and production plans in two years. Now how will you certify that? First with the EASA ELA, European Light Aircraft Standard, and then coming to the FAA with hopefully a simplified version of Part 23. Either if it's in primary category or some other amendment of uh, Part 23 that would be appropriate for the performance and mission of that aircraft. What kind of performance specs might we expect from it? I don't know too much because it's just on paper, but we're hoping for 170 knots. Wow, okay. Well, it's a very clean, aerodynamically clean airframe. And do they have any uh, idea yet of what kind of uh, production rate that you're looking for? I mean, how many you're realistically looking to put in the market? I don't, I don't know that yet. They have established a market niche that they're going to drive for. I think there's a market for a $200,000 four-place airplane in the United States. Very good. Well, we sure appreciate your time and wish you the best. Thank you very much.